My first thought for a video to commemorate the holiday season was, of course, to cover my favorite Agatha Christie, Hercule Poirot's Christmas. However, there's another Christmas-themed Poirot story that's also a favorite of mine. It's a rarity for a short story in that it's had two adaptations, and it goes by two titles, The Adventure of the Christmas Pudding and The Theft of the Royal Ruby. It was first published in 1960, although there was a previous version of the story published in 1923 under the title Christmas Adventure. The two versions are pretty similar, but I'm going to focus on the later rendition of the story, which is the one I read first and fell in love with. Besides, the older version contains one or two embarrassing examples of past decades' differing connotations. For example, It was an ideal Christmas day, crisp and sunny. The rest of the house party were busy with the erection of the snowman. Yeah, okay. The first adaptation is an episode in the series Agatha Christie's Poirot, starring David Suchet, as part of its third season in 1991. The other is a two-part episode in the anime series Great Detectives Poirot and Marple from 2004. I'm not going to compare the two adaptations to decide which one is better than the other, as they both have strong qualities. One thing that appealed to me about choosing this story is that I finally get to cover an entry in the anime show. Poirot is approached by Mr. Jesmond from the British government, and a prince from an unnamed eastern country. The prince has been robbed of a historical treasure, a ruby, by a girl he was dating. They want Poirot to retrieve the ruby. They know who stole it and where it will be, but they're unwilling to go through official channels. Poirot is reluctant, as the job would necessitate him going undercover to an old house out in the country, but Jesmond persuades him, emphasizing the joy of an old-fashioned Christmas. Poirot finally accepts, and Jesmond manages to get him invited to Christmas at the Lacey's. Mrs. Lacey is worried about her granddaughter, Sarah, who's dating a man who has a reputation for living off rich women. The man's name is Desmond Lee Wortley, and he's staying in the house as one of the guests. Other guests include Desmond's sister, who is too ill to come out of her room, the Lacey's grandniece, Bridget, grandson, Colin, his friend, Michael, the Lacey's cousin, Diana, and friend of the family, David Welwyn. There are also some servants, Peveril, the butler, Mrs. Ross, the cook, and Annie, a kitchen maid. The night before Christmas, Poirot finds a note on his pillow. Do not eat none of the plum pudding. One as wishes you well. He's baffled by the warning and isn't sure what to expect. On Christmas Day, when the pudding is served, several objects are found within, as is tradition. One of those objects is what appears to be a ruby, which Poirot hastily collects. He learns from Mrs. Ross that the pudding meant to be served today was broken in an accident, so the New Year's Day pudding was served instead. By now, Sarah seems to already be having second thoughts about Desmond, who's been behaving like quite a jerk. That night, Desmond conclusively establishes his villainy by drugging Poirot's coffee, except Poirot is aware of it, so he only pretends to drink it. He appears to be sound asleep that night when Desmond comes to search his room, but the ruby is nowhere to be found. The three kids, Bridget, Colin, and Michael, decide to pull a prank on Poirot. The morning after Christmas, they stage a murder scene in which Bridget plays the victim, stabbed in the snow. Except that when Poirot feels for her pulse, he confirms that she's dead. The prank has gone terribly wrong. Let's pause here to look at the two adaptations. The first noticeable difference in the Suchet adaptation is that the prince has been made into real-life historical figure Prince Farouk of Egypt, and he's received what I've heard people call the Dick Makeover. In the original story, although there's no romantic connection between the prince and his betrothed, it's important to him to support her plans for improving his country's education. By creating a scandal, he could disrupt these plans, and he'd be letting her down. In the film, instead of supporting a new, more progressive regime, the prince's interests lie in quelling a rebellion. New to them! <laughs> They don't find any leads regarding the Lacey estate until a little later in the story, and that's when Jesmond convinces Poirot to go spend Christmas there. Poirot's main concern in the book is how cold it will be, but Jesmond assures him of modern central heating. This element is reused for another adaptation, that of Hercule Poirot's Christmas. Unlike the prince, Desmond is made to seem quite pleasant, and Colonel Lacey displays hardly any animosity toward him at all, at least not overtly. In fact, the adaptation doesn't tip us off early that Desmond is the villain. Instead, it lays groundwork for other characters looking suspicious. Despite these changes, I find the Suchet version quite charming, 
especially since there are some parts that function as nothing but filler. An entire scene is devoted to Poirot giving a tutorial on how to cut up a mango. Where did you learn that? A duke taught me. Now, one awkward difference between story and adaptation is the absence of snow in the latter. The footprints leading up to Bridget's body are an important clue, so instead of snow, they have this random Egyptian artifact in a sandbox. There's nothing in the original story about Colonel Lacey being an archaeologist, so it'd be funny if they invented this whole side plot just to have a justification for this thing, because for some reason there was no snow. I swear, they've used that house in, like, 20 different Poirot episodes. Also, I'm probably the only person who'd noticed this, but the kid who plays Colin also plays Edmund in the 1980s version of The Chronicles of Narnia. Now let's turn to the anime adaptation. Not only does Maybell accompany Poirot on his adventure, but Hastings comes too. Unfortunately, with Maybell on the scene in these stories, poor Hastings is often left with nothing to do. There's also Maybell's pet duck, Oliver, who offers a strange dynamic in a series about tragic death. As with most of the episodes in this series, this version stringently adheres to the book, with one notable exception, the scene where Poirot takes a break from the case to help the kids build a snowman, which I think is awesome. One thing left out of both adaptations is Sarah's character arc. A good portion of the story focuses on her inner conflict between her determination to marry Desmond and her unwillingness to hurt her grandmother's feelings. Picking up where we left off with the original story, when Bridget's body is found, the ruby is clasped in her hand. This indicates Poirot gave the ruby to Bridget to keep safe, which is why she was killed. Poirot points out that the man's footprints resemble Desmond Lee Wortley's. Desmond freaks out, snatches the ruby, and drives away, supposedly to get the police. Now, since we already know Desmond is the villain, it seems like Poirot has just let a thief and a murderer go free, along with the jewel he was supposed to recover. Poirot explains that Desmond must have hidden the ruby in the pudding once he heard Poirot would be arriving on the scene. The only reason it was discovered was that the actual Christmas pudding was broken, and the New Year's pudding was served instead. He had intended to abscond with the jewel using his elopement with Sarah as a cover. Sarah is crushed. But then a Christmas miracle happens. Bridget is alive! Poirot had overheard the kid's plot and used their prank to trick Desmond into revealing his true colors. The ruby Desmond took was a paste duplicate. Everything is resolved. Except, who wrote the note of warning to Poirot? Well, it turns out that was the kitchen maid, Annie, who thought Desmond was planning to poison Poirot via the pudding. Between the two adaptations, the anime version gives a lot more weight to Bridget's death. <laughs> you wouldn't think the animated version of a story would be the more dramatic, but in this case it's so. Then Poirot reveals that his hiding place for the real ruby was inside the snowman, and it feels like a cartoon again. In the live-action version, Poirot doesn't have a replica, so Desmond runs off with the real ruby. Sure, they chase him down before he can fly away, but that seems like an awfully big risk to take. In the book, Desmond's sister turns out to be Desmond's accomplice, the thief of the ruby, who hid in her room pretending to be ill for fear that Poirot might recognize her. In the adaptation, she's not confined to her room, and she hangs around Desmond so much that it's kind of obvious she's not his sister, but a jealous partner. We're led to believe Sarah is running off with him, when really it's his accomplice, but it turns out Poirot sent her for reinforcements, so we never actually see her reaction to finding out Desmond is using her. I wonder how Poirot convinced her of it. Desmond's motive in the adaptation is to support the Egyptian rebels fighting for independence, rather than to make money off the stolen jewel. Given the kind of leader the prince seems to be, I'm not sure they don't have the right idea. In the book, Poirot's reward to Annie for trying to save him was a vanity box as a Christmas present. In the adaptation... You have the gratitude most sincere of Hercule Poirot. Um... That's nice, sir, but can I still have the vanity box? Well, 
That's all I have. Not just for this video, but for the year. At the beginning of 2022, I had no idea I was going to become a YouTuber. I cannot believe how many views and subscribers this channel has gotten. I am so thankful for all your support and kind words. I'm going to take a break for a while, but when I come back in 2023, I'm going to try to get around to more of the requests I received this year, starting with the ABC murders. Everyone be well. Do something that makes you happy. I'll see you soon.